The first step in our process is that we need to create the build kite agent. So to do that, you need to log in into your build kite account and then navigate to your organization. I already have this one. And then into the agents section. In here, you will find instructions on how to create each type of agents. I will use the Mac OS one, but I will not follow these instructions for now because I already have it. I already created my own build kite agent in my machine. But uh, if you follow these instructions, you will be able to create your own agent and then launch it. So let's assume that I already executed these instructions to create my agent. So what I am going to do next is that I'm going to launch it. At this moment and right before launch my agent, you need to remember that in order to work with AWS, we need to execute AWS CLI commands. So prior to do this step, you need to configure your AWS CLI properly with uh, your AWS credentials, which I already did. And I will not show that uh, because, well, it has basically my own credentials, which obviously uh, for security, I will not share. But uh, configuring that is pretty straightforward. Uh, go to the AWS CLI page, official page, and look for the instructions on how to configure it. I already have it, so I will not repair that. So we already executed, or we have some, I already executed the steps to create the agent. Now I am going to launch it. So let's execute these commands. Build kite agent start, and then let's just give it a name. When I execute this command, the agent is going to start, and eventually it's going to start waiting for work. But the agent is running in your computer, it's running locally. So if you go back, to your build kite account, you can see now in the agent section that you already have an agent listed in here, which is the one we just launched. If you open, you can see the state as connected and well, obviously it is waiting for work to execute. So this is it. So the step two, uh, for this step, we need to create the AWS ECR repositories for both projects. I mean, the backend project and also the automation project. So to do that, we are going to log into our AWS console. In the services dropdown, you look for Elastic Container Registry option in the container section. Click on it. And then you can create your ECR repositories here. As you can see, I already have some, which are the ones we are going to use. And I already did this because the very first time you push a Docker image in here, it's going to take a lot of time, which I want to save later. So I already created these repositories and I already pushed something in them to save time. But creating a repository is not that difficult. You just click on create repository, give it a name, uh, dummy name, for example, click on create repository. And the repo is ready for to work with it. Inside of it, here is where the images, the Docker images are going to upload or to be pushed. Uh, I'm going to delete this one because, well, we don't need it. 
but I wanted to show you how to create it. Let me just delete it. And well, the ones that we are going to use are CT example automation image and CT example backend image. Uh, let me open one of them. And as you can see, I already push an image inside of it. So this is going to save time in the future. But that's the way we create the repositories. This is a step two. Now that we have already created our AWS ECR repositories, now we need to create the configuration for the pipelines for both projects. But we are going to start with the automation one. And to do that, I am going to open my project, which I already did here in Eclipse. You can see it. Um, here is my project. And the first thing that we need to do here is to create a new folder, which name is going to be .buildkite. And inside of it, we are going to create a new file, which name is pipeline.yaml. It's a YAML file to define the behavior of our pipeline. So for buildkite, we need to define the steps section, which basically are the jobs the pipeline is going to execute. The first job, it's going to be this one. We can give it a label, which is basically just a name. Um, and we can give it a command to execute. In here, we are going to execute the we're going to execute the Maven clean compile command and that's it. We now want to create a second step or a second job in here. So for build kite, the jobs can execute simultaneously, but if we want them to run sequentially instead, we need to use the wait step or the wait job in order to tell Bilkite to wait for the previous job to finish before trying to start the subsequent steps or subsequent jobs. And that's what we are doing here. So the second job is going to be another one with the label create and upload docker image to AWS ECR and the command that we are going to execute in here it's gonna be a shell script I am going to execute a shell script which basically will hold the whole set of instructions to do this to create and upload the docker image so I am going to save this script in the scripts folder and the name of it's gonna be upload docker image dot sh so this is it this is the configuration of the pipeline but we need to create this file i am going to create a new folder in here scripts and then inside of it, we are going to create the new file we will configure now. So let's now configure this one. Um, the first thing that we need to do here is basically log into AWS through AWS CLI commands. All right, that's why I told you before launching your build kite agent, you needed to configure your AWS CLI properly, because if you don't do that, this is not going to work. So I already have this code in here. I don't want to waste time like um, writing everything. So I'm just going to paste it. But let me explain you how does this work. 
this AWS ECR get login instruction is going to acquire or to get the login information in order for your AWS ELI being able to log and work with your ECR repositories. So what you needed to do here is provide the region where your repositories are uh, created. So if we come back in here, you can see the region I am using is Ohio, US East 2. And that's why we are providing that US East 2 region in here. But this command just returns a Docker login command from behind, which is the one that is going to execute and log in into your AWS console to work with your ECR uh, repositories. So the output of this command, we are saving it in an AWS login shell script as well. And that's why I am executing then that script in here. And finally, I am removing this script because we don't need it anymore. And because we don't want to risk the security of our credentials as well. So I basically save the output of this command, which is the one is going to log into AWS, save it on a shell script. I execute that shell script and then I delete it. So we are ready to go. We already log in into AWS. The next step is that we need to create our Docker image. And to do that, we are going to execute a Docker build uh, command. In order to do this, we need to acquire or we need to get the URI string for our image. So this is the automation image. This is the automation project. All right. I need this one. And what we are going to do is, well, basically, this is the URI that you need it. But I have it because I already did it. I already uploaded it. But at the very first time, you don't have it. You just have your repository and the repository is totally empty. So you can copy the URI of your repository, which is basically the same. You just copy it. You just paste it here. And finally, you just add the latest tag which is the tag we are going to use to create this image. This new image, each time it's going to be the latest image for our project. All right. So that's why we are using this one. And well, basically, uh, for the people that already know how to work with Docker, uh, we are building the whole project as the image. And that's why I am putting just a dot to reference to the root folder. So this is the instruction we use to create the Docker image. So the next next thing it's we need to push this image into AWS ECR repository, right? So we are going to use a Docker push command. And basically we are pushing the same image we just created. So this is it the same string in here and that's it we already have the pipeline configured in here which is in the last step executing a shell script and obviously we created that shell script with the or as much instructions as we needed to perform that job which is logging into aws creating the Docker image and finally pushing that Docker image to that AWS ECR repository that we were referencing. Now the step four. So we already created the pipeline configuration in the automation project. So the next step is to create that pipeline in uh, in build kite so the first thing that we are 
going to do is that we are coming back to our Bill Kite account. And then, well, we have the agent here. We navigate to the pipelines section and we don't have anything yet. OK, so we are going to create a new pipeline. Uh, the name of the pipeline is whatever you want. Uh, the link between the project and this pipeline is going to be the webhook that we are going to use to communicate with each other, but not the name. But uh, please use a relevant name that uh, help you out link it with the project. That's the best thing you can do. So the name that I'm going to use for this one, it's gonna be CT Example Automation Pipeline. That's the same name I am going to use as description. And then we need to link it with our Git repository. For that, I am going to come here to GitHub. This is the automation project. I am going to copy my SSH key or sorry the ssh link and then nothing we come into the steps section and add a step that reads the steps from the repository that's why we created the pipeline jaml file in our repository so basically you don't need to configure anything in here this is a command that is going to upload the YAML file you created in the project into the agent. And then from there, it's going to read all of the steps that you need to execute for uh, the pipeline. OK, you can give it a name if you want. I am just going to give it um, upload pipeline config or configuration. That's it. But you don't need to change this command. You just leave it as default. Create your pipeline. And then uh, BuildKite is going to give you instructions on how to set the webhook in your project. So basically, uh, you can follow these instructions. Those are pretty straightforward. Nothing complex on them. But I'm going to do it now. I am going to copy this URL and I am going to navigate to my project in GitHub. I am going to open settings and then webhooks, add webhook, and then I am com going to configure it. I paste the URL that I copied here. The content type should be application JSON. No secret. Basically, I just use mostly the defaults, but I change the events in here. Let me select individual events. I am going to remove pushes and I am activating pull requests. For now, this is the only one I am going to use. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, I am going to use only this one for now. I use add the webhook. And that's it. Our projects are already linked. But this pipeline in BuildKite, let me come back here. As you can see here, we have a pipeline already, but no builds for now. We haven't run anything uh, through the pipeline yet. So that's why we configure the webhook. So now we need to create a pull request in order to the execution starting here. So to do that, I am going to come back to my automation project. And these are the changes we did, right? I am going to open a new terminal. And I am going to push the changes into my repository, into my project. So let me do that.
Okay, we are done with it. We already pushed the changes into our new branch in the repository. Let me go back to the repository here. And uh, so we have the new branch in here. We are one commit ahead of master. We are good with this. Let me create the pull request. I'm going to use the defaults. Okay, the pull request is already created, but not yet merged. So if I come back to my pipelines and I open the pipeline we just created, you can see the pipeline is running for this branch, fit feature pipeline configuration. So if I open it, you can see the steps that we just created. First, you will see the upload pipeline configuration, which pulled the YAML file we created in the project, then the build step that we created in that pipeline, which already succeeded. And right now it is working with the create and upload Docker image to AWS ECR step. So let's, let me open this one to show you the output. Currently, it is creating the image, the Docker image. And then it's going to upload it into AWS. So, see you in a while. Now, the step number five. Um, now that we already created, configure, and make it work, the pipeline for the automation project now it's time to create uh, basically the same for the backend project so we will start by creating the pipeline configuration for the backend project so we are going to open our project which i already have in here and we basically are going to do the same I am going to create a new folder in here. The name is going to be dot buildkite. And the same inside of it, I am going to create a new file. Pipeline YML. So we are going to configure our pipeline in here the same way we did for the automation project but now i am not going to type all of the commands i am going to just paste them in here i already got them before and basically let me just explain in here what i am doing uh, for this pipeline since it is a back end it just involves more jobs or more steps that you can see here, we have a build step. We have also a unit testing step, the integration testing step, which is the most important that we are going to create in here, especially because we will run the integration tests, which are uh, the tests that we created in the automation suit, in the automation project. So this is the most important one. And as a last step, we are going to create a deploy step. It supposes in a regular CI process that if all of these previous steps uh, worked successfully or passed successfully, we are able to deploy our project into production. So we are just simulating here a regular CI process. And these are the steps that I created for it. I already have some of these scripts created similarly in the scripts folder. I already have the build script, the run unit test script, also the upload docker image script and the deploy script. The one that we are going to create is only the run integration tests script. But let me show you the scripts that we just created. Let me save this file and open the build one. Mm, we are not uh, making this process complex. I am just creating them because we want to see 
or to simulate they are working but we are not really build, building anything or deploying anything but I created the steps just to depict how this process works and the steps that are involved in this process so basically we are just assuming we are building the project with these instructions then we are also simulating we are running the unit tests with this eco uh, instructions that's it we are not really running unit testing but it's supposed that a real project would involve unit testing so this is the step where you should be running those unit tests against your backend uh, then for the integration testing well i am going to skip this one and i am going to jump into the deploy one and it's the same we are just simulating we are deploying something even though we are not really doing it okay so coming back to the integration testing step the first script is the upload docker image script that uh, basically is pretty similar to the one we created for the automation suit so let me just open let me just open it for you and this is it basically we are following the same steps we are logging in into our aws ecr through basically the same exactly the same instructions and then we are building the docker image exactly with the same instruction the only thing that we are changing here is the uri that we are using for this docker image the previous docker image that we were using was the automation one right so now we need to use the backend one and that's why you can see here i am using the ct example backend image latest this should correspond to the one we have in here here are our two repositories so the one that we are using now is the one that corresponds to the backend image so we copy the uri from here and this is the one that we are using in this instruction this is the one that we pasted here similarly for the push uh, docker image we did exactly the same we were just using the appropriate uri string in here basically we just copied from here and pasted it in here and as you can see this is exactly the same file that we use for the automation pipeline uh, it is exactly the same script we just corrected or used the appropriate names uh, links your eyes or whatever you want them to call them uh, in here all right so we finish with this one so the important one and the one that we are going to create right now is the run integration tests sh file so let me just create a new file here in the scripts folder this is the one that we are going to use or to configure to run our integration tests and let's see how this is done now that we have um, the pipeline configuration created on the backend project now we need to create the pipeline in build kite so in order to do that we are going to come back to our build kite uh, account we are going to navigate to pipelines the similar way the similar way we did it for the automation pipeline and we are going to create a new pipeline for our project i am going to use basically the same names ct example backend pipeline okay and i will use the same name as a description now i need to link it 
to the Git repository. And the last time we did it for the automation repo, the uh, repository that we pasted here was the one belonging to the automation. So now we need to do this, but with the uh, backend repository. So this is the one that we need to use in here. So I am going to copy the SSH URL and I am going to paste it here. No environment variables. And I will do the same. I will select a read steps from repository and I will ensure not to modify the build kite agent pipeline upload command that is automatically uh, filled up in here. Uh, for the label, you can select the name you want, similarly to what we did in the other pipeline. So I am going to put upload pipeline configuration and I will create the pipeline. Again, we will be suggested with the steps to add the webhook to our repository. So I will copy the payload URL from here. I will come back to my repository, open settings, open webhooks. I will delete the existing one because this was for a test I did before. So let's assume it is empty now. I will click on add webhook and I will add the new one. Uh, content type was application JSON, no secret, defaults for the rest of the options except here. I want to select individual events. So I will do the same. I will activate this pipeline only when pull requests, not pushes. And this is the only one. You can review this list of options and you can activate as many as you want, uh, depending on what you want in your project or how you want to run your pipeline in your project. You can activate different options in here. You can review each of them and select as many as you want. I am just going to activate the pull request one and I will add the webhook. And that's it. Uh, this project in GitHub, it's uh, now linked to the pipeline. Whenever a pull request happen in my code in here, this is going to trigger the execution of the pipeline in, uh, in build kite. So we are ready to go. So if we come here to the pipelines section again, we can now see that we have the second pipeline created, which is CT example backend pipeline. So this one is going to be waiting for new build when a pull request happen in the repository. So let me come back to my code in here. I am going to open a new window, a new terminal in here and I will push my changes to the repository. So let me navigate there. Okay, as you can see, these are the latest uh, changes that we did. We added the build kite folder along with the YAML file with the configuration, with the pipeline configuration, and then we only created the run integration test uh, shell script. So these are the changes that I need to push into my repository and then create a pull request to trigger the execution of my pipeline. So what I am going to do in here is just uh, let me create a new branch. Feed pipeline configuration. So I create the pipeline. Okay, I just have a typo in here. Okay, I created the branch and let me add everything. Create, let me create the commit.
and let me push everything. Okay, like, let me go back to my repository. Now, now I have two branches in here. And okay, we're good to go. I am going to open the new branch. I am going to create a new pull request. And I will create it here. And it's done. The pipeline is running now. Let me come back to build guide, open the pipelines again, open the backend one. And as you can see, there is a pipeline running for the pipeline configuration uh, branch. So if I open it, it already uploaded the configuration from the project, from the JAML file. It is running the build. Remember that I explained to you I was not going to do anything. I just wanted to uh, depict the process, but we are not really building a project. So it's empty. It doesn't do anything except for those echoes. Then same for the unit testing. It's supposed it is running the unit testing, the tests passed, etc. And now it's running the integration tests. Let's take a look at what it is doing. Okay, as you can see here, it already logged in to AWS. So it is creating the image now and it is trying to push the image into the, uh, into the ECR. Remember those steps are the ones that we were already created here in the upload docker image it is i mean it logged into the ecr it built the docker and it is trying to push this docker into the ecr then it is going to execute all these steps let's come back to the console and okay it already pushed the information so it is trying to do the next the steps again it logged into AWS successfully and it is trying to execute the rest of the commands let's give it some time okay it already mounted the backend image in here, it, al it already uh, run it. And right now it is uh, trying to execute the tests against that backend. As you can see here, tests started executing. Eventually they will finish. And well, finally, as you can see here, all of the tests finally were run against the backend. So 23 tests were run and 23 passed because we don't have any failure, any errors or any skipped. And well, testing succeeded and that's why it continued with the deploy script, which basically again, we didn't do anything, but it was just to depict the full process. At this moment, since all of the previous steps in the backend pipeline past uh, we are able to deploy our new version of the backend into production and this is what we should be doing in here and well basically this is it this is how we configure two different pipelines for two different projects uh, the development project which is this backend and the automation project which is uh, the automation suit we configure first. Each pipeline uploads their own Docker image into AWS. And so the way we integrate this uh, continuous testing in the backend pipeline is we create a Docker network. We mount 
the backend in that network, we mount the automation suit in that network using the Docker pipelines we stored in the AWS ECR. And well, that's basically it. It works as you can see here.